Marvin Branagh, the tragic veteran police officer of the RPD station, one of the mainstay supporting characters that we saw in Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3, Resident Evil Outbreak, and RE2 Remake, where we saw him have a pivotal role of helping our characters escape and eventually becoming one of the undead himself. So in this video, we'll be discussing Marvin Branagh before the events of Resident Evil 3 and how he was created as a character in Resident Evil 1.5, and see what different iterations he played for the subsequent games in the series, and how he could make an appearance and a potential Resident Evil 3 remake. Anyways, before we do get started with the video, I just want to say my name is Heydeva, and I do cover a lot of Resident Evil and The Last of Us content on my channel. So if you guys are interested in those type of videos, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more content like this in the future, and also possibly adding me on both Instagram and on Twitter, where you guys can message me there personally at any time. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about Marvin's initial concept character in Resident Evil 1.5 that never made it to the final product that we saw in Resident Evil 2. Alright, Alright, so let's go ahead and start off with his overall character design and how much it hasn't changed throughout the years. With Marvin's overall appearance and attire has stayed relatively the same throughout all of his different iterations, where he uses the RPD's standard uniform compared to Leon's all blue suit, and his overall build has stayed consistent throughout all of his different cameos, similar to Chris Redfield in Resident Evil 1 Remake's version. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and delve in with his role that played in Resident Evil 1.5 and how that changed with the finished product that we saw from the classic Resident Evil 2. Anyway, so Marvin would play the role of a veteran police officer in the RPD station, and would be a supporting key character that would follow Leon in his journey, similar to how we saw Ada Wong follow him in the classic game, where he would be a factor of fighting against the many zombies in the police station, and would also help with the puzzle solving aspect of the game, which this is one of the most significant deviations from the final product that we know in RE2, because in this Resident Evil 1.5 version, Marvin would play such a large role not just in the gameplay, but also in the overall story story as well, where we see both Leon and Marvin traverse through the many areas of the game that included the RPD station, the sewers, and finally making it to the Umbrella Secret Lab, which also along the way, these two characters would encounter and team up with another supporting character by the name of Linda, which this was actually the early version of Ada Wong. But anyways, back on point, these three would make their way down to the Umbrella Secret Lab, where Marvin eventually gets injured by William Birkin. So Leon and Linda would have him rest in a safe room for the time being, where they have to look for the vaccine that would prevent Marvin from being turned into a zombie, and eventually all three making it out alive. Where we compare this to the final version in the original Resident Evil 2, where Marvin's role has significantly decreased, foregoing his journey with Leon and Linda to the Umbrella Secret Facility, but instead plays a minor role at the early part of the game, where his biggest contribution was giving a quick exposition of what happened during Resident Evil 1, explaining how the RPD star's members encountered zombies and monsters at the Arkley Mountains. and how they tried to warn the people of Raccoon City about the incident, but to no avail, no one believed them. What happened? About two months ago, there was this incident involving zombies in a mansion located in the outskirts of this city. Chris and the other STARS members discovered that Umbrella was behind everything. They risked their lives to reveal the truth, but no one believed them. Not long after that, all this started to happen. Anyways, after this exposition, he would give Leon a key card that would give him limited access to the other doors of the RPD station and would have him be left all alone afterwards, eventually becoming a zombie after we rendezvous with him later on in the game, which is a tragic end to the once major character, seeing him transform right before our eyes, which had me question why exactly the major role changed from its initial version. But I guess the devs didn't find it suitable to have two supporting characters following Leon on his journey, so having Ada reprise her role in the final version and take some of the key element story points from Marvin ended up being the final draft. Anyways, after covering his overall lore in Resident Evil 1.5 and RE2, one would think his role in the series was pretty much settled, but luckily for us, the different iterations of Marvin gave him a bit more depth in regards to his character, which covered the games of Resident Evil Outbreak, RE2 Remake, and Resident Evil 3. So let's go ahead and discuss his larger role in Resident Evil Outbreak, and how this portion of his lore added so much more to his character, starting with his initiative as a leader after Chief Irons went missing during the Raccoon City incident. 
Japan, where he would take charge and try to organize the remaining survivors to look for an escape, which was made difficult due to the connection to the outside world being cut off. No thanks to Chief Irons and his psychopathic decision to eliminate the remaining survivors in the RPD station. I was about to stuff her. Chief Irons? Also, Marvin didn't have much manpower to help him accomplish this plan of escape due to most of the police force being sent to stop the horde of zombies that we saw at the introduction cutscene of Resident Evil 3, which in turn would wipe out the mass majority of the police force, leaving the remaining members to take shelter inside the police department. Also, with the looming dread of the zombies coming their way, cornering both the east and west side halls, it was difficult for Marvin and company to maneuver around the building, with their next plan of escape was to look for the secret passageway to the underground levels, allowing them to avoid the zombies and monsters outside the RPD station, which this aspect was brought back to life in RE2 Remake, and how the passage was implemented fully, allowing us to go to the underground levels through the main hall of the RPD station, just underneath the statue. Use this to keep in touch with me. It doesn't have much range, but the signal should get through if I'm close by. Leave it to me. I promise I'll be back with help. But unfortunately for Marvin, allowing his fellow officers to search for an escape and looking for help, he would later be wounded while making rounds, which this ties in with all the different versions that we've seen so far, explain how he got his wounds that would turn him into a zombie. Anyways, the final aspect we'll be discussing about Marvin is his very small cameo in Resident Evil 3 and how that could be changed for a potential Resident Evil 3 remake. Because mind you, Marvin's role in the original Resident Evil 2 was to give a quick synopsis of what happened in RE1, informing either Leon or Claire of the current situation at hand. So one would think what happened with the overall storyline when it came to Resident Evil 3. But it goes to show that in the official timeline, Jill actually traversed to the RPD station before Leon or Claire made it there. So by the time she saw Marvin on the west side of the RPD station, he was still unconscious from the attack that he suffered earlier on, which Resident Evil Outbreak ties in this part of the lore. But this is where the non-interaction that we get from Marvin while playing as Jill Valentine from Resident Evil 3, where we get to see him unconscious and holding a file that explains one of the puzzles in the game, which works in a sense because she already knew what happened in RE1 and the events that has led to the Raccoon City incident, which now brings us to Resident Evil 3 Remake and how that could change some of the story points and beefing up the lore for us fans to enjoy, with one aspect could be a small reunion between Jill, Brad, Elliot and Marvin. Also by the way, Elliot was the guy who got killed in the early portion of RE2 Remake. So with this group, they can expand upon how the RPD station was being raided by the hordes of zombies, possibly applying gameplay that could have us collecting items that would help off close off all the windows and points of entries for the time being. Also Brad could be utilized working alongside Marvin as they fight off the many monsters inside the police station, while also securing some of the key maps that could lead to the underground levels. Instead of just eliminating Brad so early on without giving us too much of a backstory like we saw from the original RE3. Also, Jill at this time could meet up with Nemesis during the end portion of her traversal in the police department, explaining the large holes in the second floor of the west side locker room, with her goal was to lead the tyrant away from Marvin and Elliot, and keeping them safe in the police station as she tries to lure Nemesis outside, where finally Brad gets his last moments and connecting the storyline to his previous incarnations. Anyways, in the end, with a potential announcement coming soon for RE3 Remake, news about this game has been really hush-hush, but it's almost hard to deny the inner rumblings of the internet and how Capcom's recent success of remakes and video game titles has really spurred on to make this RE title come to reality. But we'll see soon enough with the Video Game Awards 2019 just around the corner, and hoping to hear some Resident Evil 3 remake news would be outstanding for all of us fans. Anyways, what do you guys think about Marvin Branagh overall? And should he reprise his role in Resident Evil 3 remake and have him play a larger segment of the game? Or should he stay unconscious for the time being like we saw from the classic RE3 and play the game out like he was 
supposed to. Please let me know and why on the comment section down below. Also, if you guys enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button for more Resident Evil 3 remake news and content in the future. Anyways, I really do hope you guys enjoyed the content, and this is Heydeva, and I'll see you guys on the next video. And don't make my mistake. If you see one of those things, uniform or not, you do not hesitate. You take it out. Or you run. Got it?